Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna show you how you can achieve more realism by using Vallejo washes and layering your colors. And we're gonna do that by painting a red bellied piranha and we're starting right now. Now, I thought this swim bait would be ideal for a piranha because of its shape. It already has this roundish shape. Now, the difference is that a piranha has really small scales and this swim bait has rather big scales. But that's not a problem. We're just gonna make a piranha with bigger scales and it's still gonna look like a real piranha. Also, the detail on this swim bait is really nice. So we're gonna try to make a very realistic looking piranha. I sometimes like to take notes when I'm looking at reference pictures so that I don't forget any steps and that I can think over first what I'm actually gonna do before I layer any paint on my lure. So that I think about how I'm gonna layer each color first before I start painting my lure. So to start off with painting our piranha, I just did a simple base coat of Wicked White combined with a little bit of 4050 and some 4011 reducer. And then I went over that with a pearl white. And now we're gonna layer our other colors on top of that pearl white. And that pearl white is gonna give a little bit more depth. That pearl white is gonna give a little bit more life and shimmer. And that's gonna feel more fishy than when you would use opaque paints. Here I am using the Vallejo model wash. This is a highly pigmented, very fluid kind of paint which is very useful to put on lures with a lot of texture because that wash will run down into the crevices and bring out more detail or at least it's gonna give a lot of depth. Now this brown is gonna be a darker layer that's gonna be behind the green that we're gonna put on top. So that brown is gonna darken some areas of the green and it's gonna be at the end it's gonna be in the background. Because if you look at a reference picture, then you can see that some of these piranhas have a little bit of a brownish green, darker area behind the gill plates and a little bit on the body. So that brown is going to give that dark green brownish undertone in the background. Now I am using a Vallejo model wash dark green and with this I am washing the body again and dampening and stippling everything away so that we don't get any too dark tones but we're just subtly creating more depth and color onto our lure. I don't let this dry onto the lure before I dipped it off with a paper towel and that is because or else it would turn too dark green and if I stipple it off then I will have softer colors and softer nuances of green on my lure. And also this is gonna give a very irregular texture which is going to be different every time and that feels very natural. Now I am using a Vallejo model wash olive green which is even a little darker and it's just to create more texture. So we're doing the same thing as we did before but just applying it and stippling it off with a paper towel to create some texture. Now you have to be careful because a model wash reactivates another model wash that's underneath there. So when you are stippling you have to be careful you do not wipe away the wash that is underneath. So stipple very carefully and if you do wipe off a little bit wash here and there just apply a little extra wash specifically on that area and let it dry for a little longer. Now I am again using Vallejo model wash brown to create the first depth and texture onto our head. I'm really pushing that wash into the gill plates so that we get a really nice dark tone there. And I'm trying to keep the gill plate itself very light. And I'm also stippling a little bit of my wash here and there and let that dry to create a little bit of extra texture. Now I'm doing the same thing again with the Vallejo model wash dark green and olive green. Just applying some texture, dipping it off and leaving a little bit more wash here and there to dry up to create darker tones. And I'm just using my airbrush to blow dry all the wash so that we can proceed to the next step. Now I am using some Wicked Aluminium Coarse. And this is a very nice silvery paint with a little bit of a more coarse pigment in there which is very nice and shiny. And we're gonna dry brush this a little bit on the underside of the gill plates, not the entire gill plate 
but mostly on the underside of the gill plate and this is going to give that silver sheen whenever it hits the light. Now I'm using Wicked Detail Moss Green and this is my favorite color to use as a green because it's very natural and it's gonna bind all those green washes that we used together. So by layering a little layer on top of the lure and a little bit on the gill plates, not everywhere, that's gonna bind those green nuances all together with a subtle green transition. And now we're using Wicked Detail Sepia to get those browns back a little bit there where we used the brown washes. I am simply dry brushing a little bit of Wicked Metallic White Coarse and Wicked White Pearl on there just to get those gill plates a little lighter, a little bit more silvery again because I feel that they are a little bit too dark so I want to make them a little lighter but just by dry brushing a little bit of white metallic pigments on there. Now I'm spraying some Wicked Detail White and this is to prepare my orange because I'm going to use a fluorescent orange which is going to be very bright on this bait. A little bit too bright maybe for a natural red bellied piranha but I think it's going to be a really nice feature to use a fluorescent orange on this lure. But to make this orange really bright and pop we need a white base. So that is why I'm using a transparent white to create this fading white that is fading out towards the upper side of the body. So now I'm applying my fluorescent orange all over everything that I made white. I am doing this in a few light tint coats so that I can control the fading out of the orange into the green of the body. Now I'm spraying wicked fluorescent red on top of that orange but not everywhere just in on the core of the body and on the gill plates just to create a little bit of an interesting warm tone there in two different colors of fluorescent orange. This wicked fluorescent red has been tinted down a little extra so it becomes a little bit more transparent so that I can make the transition from the red to the orange very nice and subtle. And now with some very well reduced wicked detail black magenta I am putting some subtle black spots on there just like in a few reference pictures that I have. And now I'm thinning down a little bit of our Lure Blanks foil glue with water because this is just water based so you can thin it down a little bit with water. The reason that I thin it down is so that I can splatter it and that it doesn't leave a too much of a texture. I want it to be really flat as a, as a very thin layer of paint on the Lure. I don't want it to create any additional texture. So that's why I thin it down a little. Now I'm splattering this on with a brush and a toothpick by rubbing the toothpick over my paintbrush. This gives little splatters. And also with the paintbrush I'm gonna give a little bit extra glue on the top. Because as you look at most piranhas they have more shiny scales on the top of their body. And now I am using my silver foil from Laura Blanks. And I'm using a sheet that has already been used because this gives a very irregular texture and not all the glue is going to be covered with silver foil. This is going to give us the most subtle scaling effect because of that irregular pattern that's already on that foil. And that irregular pattern you are transferring to your lure. And that's going to give a very nice and realistic piranha looking scaling effect. Now I'm going to place the eyes and I'm using these glass dome shaped realistic eyes from Lure Blanks and these color match perfectly with the piranha's eyes. Ready for a clear coat. finished and I have to say this looks extremely realistic also that silver foil that we used to represent those silvery scales that just looks so realistic on this lure it's really nice also the washes that we used that stayed in between the cracks really made it nice and dark and gave it a lot of texture which is 
really awesome on this bait. The mount looks really vicious. He needs to go to a dentist. And by using pearls and metallics, especially those coarse ones, you can see that the gill plate has a really nice shine to it. Really super realistic. And that's all thanks to that the blank has really realistic textures in it. And by using these washes, you, you're gonna create a lot of definition and create a lot of depth in those textures. As you can see here, there was a lot of texture and that wash stayed in there and made it really nice and dark. Which made it really nice and realistic. As always guys, I will leave a link in the description down below for all the materials that I use to paint this lure. This will guide you to my webshop which is based in Sweden and if you would buy anything there you will be supporting me and the channel. If you got any questions regarding this lure or anything else leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.